We have found a room. All right, it's time to write the code. All right guys, hey what's up? Um, so everyone I know are busy with finals and doing other things, but I had to do a video because my goal is kind of to do four or five of these a week so that we can cover a few hundred before next interview season. So today is kind of an easier question, um, just to you know, like get your feet wet into things. And um, <laughs> yeah, so reverse the digits of an integer. So this is the basic question, given an integer, like 42 or a negative one as well, reverse the digits of the integer as efficiently as possible. So whenever we approach questions like this, we first always need to think of three things. We need to think, well, we need to think of three types of cases. So we have our empty cases, we have our normal cases, and we have our edge cases. So our empty cases is, what if something's no? What if something's zero? What if something doesn't exist? How do we handle that proactively with our, with our code? Um, and also the normal cases, this is the normal stuff. This is what your code should always handle. This is typically the easiest thing to get working. And then finally, there are your edge cases. The cases that often don't come up, but your code still needs to handle. Um, one thing you'll find is that writing code that works is fairly straightforward, but writing code that works with all types of cases and is very flexible and can handle empty states is a whole nother thing. So it's very important that you vocalize to your interviewer that you're thinking about these cases. Um, so not to get too far away from the question, but it's really important that I want to make these videos about the approach towards the question just as much the question itself. Reverse the digits of an integer. So how are we going to do that? So there's two approaches that we can take for this. So Approach one is to take the integer we're given, like 42 or 314, and turn it into a string and reverse that string ourselves. And one of the, this is a really key pattern you'll see in interview questions. If they're asking you a question like this, it's almost always never going to be that straightforward and have a hacky solution like that. This, these, this is a trap. You don't, whenever you're given a certain type of question, in a certain type, like this is given in an integer. Maybe it's given in a string in another question. It's done like that on purpose. So you could do it this way, but it won't probably be the actual solution. Um, so yes, you could switch it to a string. It'd have the same time complexity, same space complexity, but it would not be as efficient as actually doing the operations on the actual number. So here's the actual approach that you should take when solving this problem. And this is a key takeaway for other primitive um, problems you're going to do. This is a very key thing to remember. So to get the ones place of a number, to, to get that first digit, which is the first one we want to place and the front of the reversed number, we're going to do x mod 10. So the mod operator gives us the remainder after a division. So what's going to happen is when we do a division on a number like 123, we're going to have 123. If we divide it by, if we divide it by um, 10, then we're going to get 12 as our answer, and we're going to have three left over because we would get 120 um, divides, 10 divides 120, and then we would have three left over. So the mod operator is gives us the remainder left over. So we mod x by 10 to get the uh, ones place. So in this case, 
Um, for the example 123, it would be 3. So we would have 123, and we'd grab this guy, and then we would place him as the first digit of our new number. And now what we need to do is, we need to remove him from the original number. So how do we do that? Like I was saying, so for this we can do x divided by 10. x dividing by 10 removes that last, uh, the last digit on a number. Why does it do that? So when we're dealing with integers, when we're dealing with integers, they're not floating types. Floating types allow us to have a decimal point. So when I divide 123 by 10, when I divide 123 by 10, I get 12.3. But the variable is holding an integer type. It cannot handle a decimal place. So what's going to happen is this is just going to disappear. It's just going to disappear. Even if it's a 9 here, even if it was 129, the, the, the decimal pay, place is dropped. So finally, so we would have 123. We would mod off 3. Uh, that to our answer. We would remove the 3 with a division. So how many times would we need to do this? We would need to do this 3 times. We need to remove the 2, add it to our answer. And then we need to remove the final digit, 1. And this is our reverse number. This is 123 reversed. How do we know when to stop? We know when to stop when we have 0 remaining, when we've divided off all the digits that we have left. So that's basically the approaches that we can take to this. Um, and that is, the, that is the way to do it. So let's look at the code and walk through it right now. So here we have the solution in code. So this is, first off, to address our time and space complexities, we always want to address these first. Before we jump into a solution, we want to tell our interviewer it's going to run in this time and this space so that we know we've weighed our trade-offs and we found what, to us, is the most optimal solution. So this is going to, first, before I even say O of N, this is what I talk about in another video, don't just say O of N, what is N? N is the number of di digits. We define N as that. So when we say O of N time, we say that it's going to take a linear amount of work to do this processing. We're going to have to touch N digits. So if I have 123, N equals 3. I'm going to have to do N, uh, I'm going to have to do N placements, N iterations of this while loop we're going to get into here. So, and the space is constant. This operates on the actual integer. We do not create any auxiliary space with our algorithm. And therefore, we have constant space. Space complexity will not scale. If I have a number that is a million di digits long, the algorithm will still use the same space that it used if I'm processing the number zero. So that's why space is constant as the input scales. So for this code, it's fairly straightforward. Um, we keep track of our result. Um, we could have negative input, so we, we take the absolute value of that and keep that in the remaining variable. That will operate in our while loop. So math.abs does not affect the actual variable x, so we still preserve that x. So down here we can check whether it's negative and return a negative of the reversed um, integer. <clears throat> so while we have a, a remaining number, while it's not zero, we operate. So the first thing we do is we scoot over whatever our result already has. So if our result already has a 1, if we multiply by 10, that scoots everything over and it gives us a 0 in the 1's place. And we're going to place our digit there in the 1's place in our result. That was sloppy. Um, so next, we extract the, we extract the, for the 1's place from the remaining number. And like we said before, that's done with the mod operator. And then we add that to the result. So now the result is going to have, so we go one, two, three, and our result was zero. Now the result, the result is going to have three. And we need to get rid of what we just processed here. So we divide by 10 to get rid of that three. And so now our result is three and our remaining is 12. And let's do that again. So we scoot. Scoot it over, add a zero, multiply it by 10, remove that, extract the ones place from the remaining, and then remove that from the remaining. And let's do that one more time. Put a zero there, extract the ones place, divide by 10. And now our remaining 
Our remaining is zero, so we're finished. So now, if it were negative, this is what's called a ternary operator. You can like Google it online. It's just a condensed if else. So if x is less than zero, if that's true, we return a negative result. If it's false, we return a positive result. So that's basically the gist of this question. I think the biggest takeaways to take from this question are knowing that you can extract the first digit of a number using the mod operator, modulo operator, mod 10. And then you can get all the other digits by doing x divided by 10 to cut off that last digit. And the final takeaway is whenever you get a question in a certain primitive type, it's often going to stay in that type so that the whole point of the question is that you operate on the original type. And that's kind of the point of this question. So this was an easy one. It's, it's finals week. Um, I don't have my uh, friend Mordecai um, to record video. So this is kind of a lower quality video, but I really wanted to do a video, maybe even, even a question as easy as this, just to get something out. If you like this video, hit the like button. Um, subscribe to the channel if you want to see more videos like this. And... Yeah.